Welcome back everybody to Leap of Faith. This is Weakness Wednesday and I'm going to share with you today a weakness or an observation of weakness that I've seen for quite some time now. And it's essentially the standards that you set for yourself across every single area of your life. Now, at the moment, what I've seen everywhere, social media, across every single channel, work that people are producing, laziness that is exemplified by immediate dopamine, gratification, get rich quick mindsets and thinking produces shit. Right now in the world, there is so much shit everywhere. Like everywhere you look, there's just junk. People spewing different things about whatever their opinions and beliefs are. People working as little as they can for as much money as they can. People doing quality of work and completing services at extremely subpar standards. Like like the overall state of things at the moment is really, really, really poor. And there's so much of it, right? Because what social media has done is it's just created this massive pool for everybody to swim in. There's no rules for showering before you enter the pool. There's no rules for what you need to wear before you enter the pool. There's this just big inter fucking collected swamp pit of shit, right? And it sounds, it sounds disgusting, but it's very, very true. If you look at like the state of social media, the state of like what you see and consume in this digital world right now, it's crap. It's crap. It's crap on crap on crap on crap on crap. Spewing crap over and over and over again, consuming crap, watching crap, listening to crap, getting distracted by crap. And what happens in this particular environment is you and the standards that you have for yourself and the standards you have for what you expect of yourself all begin to decline. And if you don't have a high standard for yourself and what you expect from yourself and other people, then naturally lower or rise to only your lowest standard. It doesn't matter how much you want. doesn't matter how much you think you're a bad motherfucker. doesn't matter how much you think like you're unstoppable and you've got all these crazy ambitions and ideas. If you accept ordinary and if you let ordinary become the norm and if you don't punish and you're not rigorously like obsessive about creating elite people in your organization within yourself first that then transmutes into your organization, you're going to experience shit. You're going to experience shit. You're going to experience shit on shit on shit. And by way of the law of congruence, it becomes more difficult to cut the shit, begin to become shit, right? And not to go and like do a big shit on your day right right now and, and put all this negative mood over everything. But what I'm saying in this particular episode today is that the things that you want in your life come down to your standards. And if you watch and observe and consume all different angles and all different types and formats and formulas and different mediums of essentially shit, people who have no idea about what they're talking about, telling you what to do, crazy cat videos and dumb TikTok reels, et cetera, et cetera, of shit that has no benefit to you at all, you being out of integrity with your punctuality, with your word, with your consistency, with how you break your habits, with what you say you're going to do and you don't do it with the amount of money that you spend. Every single one of these things overall done consistently over time, gradually, gradually, gradually deteriorates the quality of your standard. And the standard that you set, once it's set, it's really hard to fucking change that thing. And it takes a lot of effort, it takes a lot of energy because what happens when you start to have uh, a lower standard, you will accumulate uh, parasites or bad bacteria or things that will begin to attach to that particular standard and they will stay there and they will leech on you and they will just infect you at that level and it will keep you there. All right. So today, the weakness that you have is your standard and the weakness that's going to hold you where you are, despite whatever you think you want and despite whatever big, bold future you have. And I'm saying this equally to myself when I'm speaking to you right now, because I've observed and witnessed our different standards change through my life and go crazy fucking high. And also go crazy, crazy, I wouldn't say crazy low, but just crazy high and then also soften a little bit and accept things. But I was like, why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? You need excellence. You need excellence. If you accept anything but excellence, then you will get shit and you will simply continue to get shit in perpetuity over and over again. So how do you stop seeing and observing and consuming shit and producing shit and becoming shit and experiencing shit and having a shit life and just living a shit life? Well, you've got to start with the simple things that you can control immediately, all right? There's an amazing um, documentary on Netflix, and it's about Jonah Hill's psychiatrist, psychologist, and Stutz, I think it's called. And in that, he says, essentially 80% of my patients that I treat, I will first work on these fundamentals, which is make sure you're sleeping enough, make sure you're exercising three to five times per week, make sure your nutrition is balanced and, and overall supportive of a healthy human body, and drink enough water. And he said literally 80 
90% of people that he just does that too and simply works on their physical body are healed. Like are healed. Like they're literally like, I'm transformed. I've never felt this good in my whole life before. Well, no shit because you haven't exercised for 20 years, you fat shit, right? So first things first, control the things you can control and immediately control them savagely, all right? If you're going to start exercising, do it. Get a coach, get someone who's going to hold you accountable, get a PT who can show up in the gym and scream in your face and take the think out of the equation. So you don't need to like sit there and be like, oh, is the chest press taken today? I'm just going to go and do some push-ups at home and then do some sit-ups. Like take as much of the cognitive load out of the equation, get someone to hold you accountable in that particular new environment that you are testing and pushing yourself to. Get that sorted, get your exercise sorted. Number two, get your sleep sorted. It's so important what time you go to sleep. I noticed massively, I had an amazing sleep last night. I went to bed at 8.45 and I woke up at about 3.30 and I was like beaming with energy. I'm good, I'm ready, I'm motivated, I'm inspired. I'm able to handle any stressful situation which with so much more bandwidth. If I only get five hours of sleep, I'm okay for a day, maybe two days, but after that, I snap. My decision-making process has so much less kind of bandwidth to handle anything that would be like difficult, challenging, hard to kind of, you know, run my mind over and it just snaps and I make poor decisions, right? Exactly the same for you. Your decision-making process relative to like how you eat, what you're going to do, how how much integrity you're going to have with meetings or engagements or your work schedule or your career building progression or your side hustle or your business you're launching. If it gets hard and you are running on low sleep, you will just be like, fuck it, it's too hard, cut it. And you won't do it. And you'll cave in and you do the easiest thing because ants go to where the sugar lies, right? We will constantly choose the path of least resistance. Exactly the same thing with you. For example, if you're going and trying a new workout regimen and then you're running on low sleep, you're trying to do your side hustle on the, on, on the side, it's not working and you're like, well, fuck it, I'm just going to watch Netflix and eat Hungry Jacks. Done. Easy, great dopamine hit, feel good right now and very, very, very low amount of energetic input goes into creating that nice feel good emotion. Okay. Look after your sleep, get that thing sorted. Number three is, is your food and nutrition. I'm, like probably don't eat that McDonald's Hungry Jacks, all that shit. Get rid of it. If you can stick to single uh, ingredient foods. And what I mean by that is like steak has steak in it, has just beef in it. You know, kale has just kale in it. There's nothing else. Avocado has like just avocado in it. Like, I don't know, brown rice has like just brown rice in it. You understand what I mean? Almonds just have almonds in it. If you can balance your overall eating schedule and you can remove those massive big long lists of artificial flavors, artificial sweeteners, preservatives, and all these other fantastic things that get crammed into so-called quote unquote foods, you will notice a, a tremendous increase in your energy, in your cognition, uh, in your digestion, and your overall bowel movements. That will also improve dramatically and you will just feel a lot better overall. So like clean your diet up, get that thing sorted. If you can stick to single ingredient foods, great. I cannot recommend that high enough and just start there. I'm not going to recommend keto or fucking paleo or this, that, the other. It doesn't matter. If you can just balance it out and if you prefer, and if you like to eat some carbs, then just eat some sweet potato and eat some bread, maybe not bread, maybe like some nice, like, I don't know, fermented grain bread, if potentially that's what, you, what you're in for, but stay away from the massive big lists of like chip packets and, and and massive processed foods that have like a more ingredients in it that I could like put into chat GPT and, and know what the hell that they even are. Like that thing wouldn't even know what they fucking are. Do you understand? Like it is damaging for your body. If you can't even pronounce and understand the ingredients, but you're cramming them in your throat, it's not good for you. Okay. So get those three things sorted. Like get your sleep sorted, get your exercise regimen sorted, get your diet and nutrition sorted. If you want to get really step it up and start to really challenge yourself more, stop any form of self-pleasure, masturbation, get rid of it. No porn. Get rid of that whole thing. It's such an energy leaching thing that's just going to drain you and have you constantly thinking. This is the this is the most fucked up thing that I noticed when I was addicted to porn. And I used to watch porn one to two times per day, consistently, consistently, all the time, right? And it was just like this constant on my mind of like, mm, I'm just going to like just have a quick watch of this. And I'm like, what are you doing? It's like 11 a.m. What are you doing? Ruining all your energy, taking all your attention and putting it in the trash, taking any form of focus and any form of like positive positive focus in any particular, destroy, 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 gone. Everything that you do is just gone. So like, if you really want to step it up a notch, get rid of that thing, get rid of the whole thing, get rid of any self-pleasure, get rid of any masturbation or anything similar to that, get rid of it. Notice how much energy you will bring back into your life. Again, if you want to go deeper than that, again, start doing some cold showers, start doing some cold immersion, some, start doing something to stimulate the, 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 the sensation that you have that says, I do not want to get in there. This is difficult for me. Um, Andrew Huberman talks about in his podcast, 
class and he said there's a very uh, close similarity between the effects of cold plunge and cocaine. Listen close. So he's like, cocaine essentially has a similar dopaminergic expression in the brain as cocaine. Like there's a, a very similar relationship, but listen close. When you do cocaine, it gives you a massive, massive, massive burst of dopamine um, over a very short period of time. And with that, there is a massive decline. Whereas when you go into the cold plunge and you sit there for three to five minutes or you do a cold shower, you sit there for three to five minutes, just becoming familiar with the cold and getting out of your own mind of like, oh my God, this is so cold. The lasting effects of that cold immersion and the dopamine that is actually released in your brain and body lasts for about three to five hours afterwards. And it's a very gradual, sustainable kind of like curve that eventually tapers out. So if you want to experience more happiness and experience like a higher degree of enjoyment in your life, start jumping into the cold shower, start doing cold plunges and start to exercise more of that naturally released dopamine simply expressed with a little bit of cold. So start to control those things immediately. That's going to really give you the capacity to raise your standards even higher. Now, from there, if you want to start going to the extremes, then it's about first things first, removing anything from your life that is not excellent. And that might be quality of uh, pens that you write with. It might be quality of your computer. It might be the cluttered shit you have on your computer screen. It might be the way that you have people in and around your team. It might be the quality of work that you accept and the quality of work you say is okay. It might be uh, small little latencies by your team, by people around you, by yourself, right? Saying you're going to be here at 8.30 and then you get there at 8.37. Not good enough. Shit. Low standards. Being on time is being early. Like all of these small things you start to integrate into your life. And then you might start to study and obsess uh, fine things. Look at fine jewelry. Look at fucking Rolls Royces. Look at like fine watches. Look at fine, look at all of these things and look at the detail, the finesse, the precise measurements that go into every specific part of these intricate designs that make it possible. And notice and understand there is no room for error, right? You don't see like a Bugatti with like the, the, the front bumper like hanging down on the left-hand side. I guarantee you that thing is like cut to absolute millimeter precision. Absolutely, right? So if you study and observe and fill your mind and fill your environment with images, pictures, videos, and just consume content and observe fine lines, of observe fine details, observe extremely fine things. So your mind goes, wow, like this is what I expect. This is normal. This is what I see as normal. And it conditions you to only see that, right? If you're just in this like relaxed, messy environment, there's shit everywhere. You're only exposed to things that look average. You, my friend, will only live an average life. I guarantee you this. So really, really, really take this message today. Implement like crazy, okay? The, the, the purpose of these podcasts is not to do anything else except for empowering you to do more. That's it. Do more of the good shit while cutting the bad shit so that you can experience a much, much, much higher quality of life and remove all the junk from your life. So I hope this has been helpful. I genuinely do. I hope this can bust some weaknesses and break some weaknesses for you today in your life. Uh, if you enjoyed this, let me know, shoot me a message, drop a review down below this episode. And otherwise, I'll see you here tomorrow for Thursday Truce. See you then. Bye-bye.